really wild animals out there. Have you ever wondered why are monkeys such good swingers? What animals related to both the horse and the rhino? How dangerous is a piranha? Does Polly really want a cracker? And what the heck is a Watson? Well, the answers are coming at you, so hang on. It's National Geographic's Really Wild Animals. <laughs> Totally tropical rainforest. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, gang. It's me, Spin. Pack your pith helmet. We're heading for the tropical rainforest. How do we know we're there? Because I say so. And because we're surrounded by big trees. Heat and humidity, lots of rain, and thousands of different kinds of plants and animals. Yep, it's a tropical rainforest, all right. One of my favorite places to hang. different kinds of rainforest all over the world, but not all are tropical. Look, here's one over here, and here. There are even some in the United States and Canada, but tropical rainforests are found near my middle, also called the equator, and that's where we are, the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. Do you want to see where they are? Here it's humid and hot most of the time, and it rains like you wouldn't believe. Plants and animals really go for that hot and muggy stuff. More than half of all species in the world live in a tropical rainforest. All rainforests 
have another thing in common. They're divided into levels formed by trees and other vegetation where different animals hang out. Where's that chart? Here, I'll, I'll show you. The name of the rainforest game is sunlight. Who gets it? Who doesn't? Down here on the floor, it's dark and shady. The higher you go, the brighter it gets, up through the mid layers, all the way up to the canopy. It's kind of like a big, leafy, drippy apartment building. Whoa! <laughs> Want to meet the neighbors? Well then, step into my totally tropical elevator and I'll show you around. First stop, ground level. <laughs> Welcome to the forest floor. Okay, there's not much of a view, but at least you can stash the shades. See what I mean about how dim it is? The good thing is, most of the bugs and other animals down here don't really mind. This jaguar, for instance. Those reflecting cat eyes help him see in dim light, and he's got a terrific sense of smell, too. The jaguar's a champion tree climber, river swimmer, and all-round hunter. Think about it. With spotted coat and soft padded paws, he can sneak up on practically anybody without being seen or heard which makes it great to be a jaguar and not so great to be a taper, a possum or other animal unlucky enough to get in his way. No doubt about it, the jaguar's the king of the rainforest. Hey, he weighs up to 250 pounds. I'm not going to argue. For the most part, jaguars pretty much keep to themselves, except when it's time for romance. <laughs> Somehow, all that mushy stuff really brings out the kitten in a cat. And what could be more romantic than a moonlit night in a tropical rainforest? Another hunter who lives on the floor is the terrifying tarantula. Some of these guys are almost as big as dinner plates, but he's not as nasty as he looks. His bite's actually no worse than a bee sting. But watch out for that fuzzy body. Those hairs can sting and itch. Oh, and don't go trick or treating at his place dressed as an insect. Uh, watch out! Ooh. It's a hard, hungry world. <laughs> Eat someone for dinner? Someone else eats you for breakfast. <laughs> In this case, she's called the Coati. A cousin to the raccoon, she has quite a taste for tarantula. She even knows how to get those disgusting hairs off. <laughs> Either that or she's trying to tickle him to death. Streams and rivers are also part of the forest floor, and here in the rainforest, you'll find the fish with the baddest reputation around, the piranha. But don't believe the hype. Sure, certain piranhas have been known to hang in gangs and feast on fellow fishes, but some piranhas are actually vegetarians. Others just nibble tiny pieces off their neighbors and swim away real fast. It's okay, the fins grow back. Ouch! That must hurt. Not all of the animals on the forest floor dine on their neighbors. Some eat only veggies, like the gentle taper. She's kind of a cousin to both the horse and the rhinoceros, although that nose seems to have a mind of its own. Unlike a lot of the locals, the taper wouldn't hurt a fly, not unless she sat on one, that is. <laughs> She's a terrific swimmer, though, and spends a lot of her time paddling peacefully around, surrounded by fish. It's not her sense of humor, the fish like. It's the food she stirs up every time she chomps on a plant. Hey, look. Something's up with this bunch of ants over here. Let's check in with our ace reporter, Dan Rathernot, with live coverage from the forest floor. Can you read me, Dan? 
Yes, thanks, Finn. Uh, yes, there's lots of excitement on the forest floor. Uh, swarms of ants are running around, but nobody's talking. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I'm doing a bug on the street report for our viewers. Hello? Uh, uh, hi, I'm a reporter for Really Wild News Network. What are you doing with all those leaves anyway? Oh, watch out! Well, OK, so maybe everyone's too busy to stop and chat. These ants are called leaf cutters because that's what they do. <laughs> Cut pieces out of leaves and other plant parts and haul them home. The, the cutting's the easy part. If you want to know what it's like to be one of these ladies, and it is the females who do all the work, just try hoisting a dining room table over your head and carrying it for more than 25 miles. <laughs> Now, what do the ants do when they get the leaves home? Well, they don't eat them. That would be too easy and not nearly gross enough. No, everyone chews leaves up, sprays disgusting ant goo all over them, waits for yummy fungus to grow, and chows down on that. It's just like growing your own vegetables, only a lot yuckier. And speaking of dining delights, I'm kind of hungry myself. Where can a globe get a meal around here? Oh, waiter! Yeah, hi, I'm your waiter, Charlie. <coughs> uh, welcome to Darwin's Greasy Spoon, the finest food on the forest floor. Uh, let me tell you about today's specials. Um, first, you've got your snake special. It's a pile of fresh fog eggs in a delightful jelly sauce. Uh, hey, you didn't want me to fry those up? Uh, I'll forget it. For the ocelot that eats a lot, <laughs> we've got freshwater fish, or you can eat, but... You've got to catch it. Hey, I was going to bake that for you. Oh, forget it. Uh, the Jaguar Green Plate Special. Turtle on the half shell. <laughs> huh? Well, I won't bother grilling that for you, but sit tight and I'll get you a can out. Huh? <sighs> Enjoy your meal here at Darwin's, folks. Tipping is always appreciated. Let's face it, probably the number one activity in the rainforest is finding food. The number two activity is making sure you don't end up as food. It's all part of something called the food chain. A frog eats a bug, an opossum eats a frog, a marge eats the opossum. Sound tough? It is. That's why someone like the basilisk lizard doesn't stick around when there's a snake nearby. Whoa! <laughs> How come he can run on water and you can't? Three reasons. One, he's very light. Two, he's got extra big feet. And three, his parents are basilisk lizards. And yours aren't. <laughs> I hope. Would you like some leafy greens? There's lots to go around. Or do you care for slightly bigger things? Crawling on the ground Try to snatch it Catch it You better use your legs Eat it up before it's hatched How do you like your eggs? What do you want for lunch? What do you want to munch? Oh, that nibble or a crunch You better watch your back Or you might be someone's snack For lunch It's the rule around here Everybody's gotta have lunch, 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 lunch. Oh, someone eats the seeds The seeds get spread around Another cycle of life begins Along the forest ground As rivals for survival Keep replenishing the land The forest grows and life will go As Mother Nature planned What do you want for lunch? What do you want to munch on a nibble or a crunch? You better watch your back or you might be someone's snack for lunch. It's the rule around here. Everybody's got to have what do, what do you want for lunch? What do you want to munch on a nibble or a crunch? All right, elevator going up. All visitors for the mid layers. See how it's getting brighter out there? Up here, there's loads of interesting animals. <laughs> like that master of disguise, the leaf mantis. Hmm, that's funny. He was here a second ago. Oh, there he is. Blending in with the background. Or camouflage. 
is one of the oldest survival tricks in the book. Remember the food chain? <laughs> if you're not careful, you're somebody's lunch, right? Well, camouflage comes in mighty handy at moments like that. I mean, who wants to eat a stick anyway? Even though there's more light in the mid layers, some animals just sleep during the day and uh, run around at night. <laughs> They're called nocturnal animals. One nocturnal animal, the margay, isn't much bigger than a house cat. But don't let his size fool you. He's got a tough guy reputation. Oh yeah, real tough. You need your mom to help you beat up a moth? One of the best-known nocturnal animals in the world is this charming fellow, the bat. Hey, do you think fishing is for the birds? It's also for the bats, the fishing bats of Central and South America, that is. Look, Ma, no hands. In case you were wondering, it is possible to swallow while hanging upside down, and no messy crumbs on your lap either. Other bats would take a nice fat frog over a slimy old fish any day. <laughs> but no matter who's doing the fishing, most bats use the same amazing technique called echolocation. That's the scientific term for screaming out of your nose or mouth and figuring out what's around you by the way sounds bounce back. What's more, these bats understand enough frog talk to tell which ones are poisonous and which aren't. And speaking of bats, here come the vampires. Well, okay, these guys aren't really the undead. In fact, vampire bats are actually clean and well-behaved little guys. Sure, they hang upside down, have pointy teeth, and fly through the night air. And then there's that nasty craving for fresh blood, too. But they almost never kill their victims, and they never talk in that bogus plant Sylvanian accent. What they do is find an unsuspecting dinner partner, like this farmer's donkey. The bat then licks a small area clean, makes a tiny cut that doesn't even hurt, and uh, settles down for a quiet dinner. <laughs> dinner doesn't always stick around, though. Hey, come back with that hoof. Lots of animals are nocturnal, but plants need light. And even though it's brighter up here than on the floor, there's still not a lot of sun. So most mid-layer plants try to grow all over their neighbours to get their share of sunlight. The acacia tree, however, always manages to sunbathe alone. How? It's got ants in its plants! No, not pants. Plants. The ants act like security guards cutting through the vines that get too close and <laughs> chasing the freeloaders away. In return, the tree gives these guys all the acacia juice they can drink. Food pellets to bring home to the kids. Plus, luxurious accommodations inside a hollow thorn. Not a bad deal for either side. Sure. Life's tough in the rainforest, but you'll find that lots of plants and animals help each other out. In that way, they're kind of like partners, but um, not necessarily the way you think. We interrupt this program for a weather update from Tropical Trevor. This is just in from our weather desk. <coughs> Today's weather, uh, light rain with periods of heavy downpour. Tomorrow's weather, heavy downpour with periods of light uh, rain. The next day, frequent showers. The day after that, well, unrelenting baths. <laughs> Our long-range forecast, 
Oh, figure it out yourself. I've got to find some dry socks. Whether you're on the floor or in the mid layers, there's just no escaping it. Rainforests are called rainforests because it rains most of the time. Some get up to 400 inches of rain in a year. <laughs> That's as high as a three-story building. With all that rain, sooner or later the question comes up. Just how wet can you get? Well, it depends. Lots of plants, for example, have shiny, slippery surfaces that act like raincoats. Many leaves also have these pointy little drip tips. This way, rain doesn't build up in a leaf, which could make it soggy and mouldy and foul-smelling and no fun at parties. And if you're a wasp, do you really need all that rain leaking into your nest and soaking the kids? No way! So after a big rainfall, the whole gang gets together, sucks out the rain and spits it out. Drop by drop! Of course, lots of rainforest animals and plants really need all that rain. This poison arrow frog, for example. Her two babies, called tadpoles, hitch a ride on her back as she hunts out a place to put them. Hmm, this bromeliad plant looks okay. Yes, nice and quiet built-in rainwater cup and no hungry snakes around. Mom hops in and her kids hop off. But don't worry, she'll be back later with some froggy chow. Hasta la vista, babies. And later to the mid layers. Elevator up. Last stop, top floor. Everyone out for the canopy. Hmm. <laughs> Watch your step. The first one. Wow! Hey! Oh, come back. You know I lose more caps that way. It's all the wind up here, and look at the sun. Phew! Huh. The weather up here changes much more than it does below. That's because there's no shelter from the sun, wind, and rain. All those branches form a kind of highway that's as familiar to the animals who live up here as the hallways in your school are to you. Ask any spider monkey. Another canopy creature is this odd-looking animal, the three-toed sloth. And no, it's not your television set. The sloth really is greenish. You'd be greenish too if you had tiny plants called algae growing in your hair. But don't bother sending shampoo. The color helps the sloth blend in with the leaves. It's camouflage at work, remember? As you can tell, the sloth's not about to break any tree climbing records in the speed category. But it's one terrific swimmer. Hm. Once it actually makes it down to the water, that is. The canopy is also the home of one of the loudest animals in the world. No, not your little cousin, Benny. It's the howler monkey. You can hear a pack of these guys for more than a mile away. And what exactly are they howling about? Well, the rough translation is, this is my territory, you fuzz-faced primate. Believe it or not, other howlers get the message. If you're looking for birds, the canopy is where to go. The flashy, flapping feather heads up here really go for that luscious canopy fruit. Oh, they love to pig out on berries. Uh, bird out on berries. Whatever. And like most birds around the world, these guys usually get the best view too.
joyous celebration of the dawn As we call to each other A symphony of sounds can ease on Come, I'll share with you Nestled in a nest in the largest tree in the rainforest is this bird, the harpy eagle. With a wingspan of over six feet, she can hit 50 miles an hour in no time. Falling like a bolt of lightning, she's truly the flying terror of the canopy. Although her four-month-old baby is more like the hopping doofus as he figures out how to fly. He's going to spend weeks doing practice runs. Hopping up and down and doing even more practice runs before he's ready to take off. Here he is on his first flight. Geronimo! From flashy parrots to awesome eagles, the rainforest has birds of every feather. There's even a super strange bird you've probably never seen before. And now Mother Goose, the spinning storyteller, will read to us the tale of the little Watson who wouldn't. Once upon a time, in the far off forest, lived a baby Watson with her wise old mother. But baby Watson was bored of being under her mother's wing. So one day, she decided to fly the coop. She hit the road, all set for fun times, wild adventure, and all the things she could eat. Yes, but what did she find instead? Uh, a hungry boa. Bummer. Grown up Watsons fly away when there's danger. But what if you're two weeks old and you've never had a flying lesson? Can she make it, or is it Watson burgers for dinner? Dun, da, 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 da. Mom to the rescue. As you know, nothing scarier than an angry mum. Yeah, even a big snake doesn't want to mess with one. Yeah, back off, buster. Oh, it's great having your mum on your side, but how about getting her off your back? Get my back, mum. The end. In some tropical forests, there's more living up in the canopy than just birds, bugs and monkeys. Would you believe there are also fish? You heard me. In special forests in South America, it rains so much that the Amazon River actually floods. For about four months a year, the water rises right up to the treetops. You'll find lots of familiar aquarium faces up here, as well as some not so familiar ones, like this river dolphin family. <laughs> and you thought these guys only hung out in SeaWorld? Unlike ocean dolphins, river dolphins can't jump very well, but check out the funky head shape and the way they can bend their necks around. Hard to believe, but these guys have really bad eyesight. But like most bats, they use echolocation to get around. That and the old dolphin rubber neck come in mighty handy when dodging tree branches. Hey. You see this bug? You're not the only one. One fish in the flooded canopy, the water monkey, not only has an eagle eye, he has amazing lift. Check this out! Whoa! <laughs> Can you imagine his career if he could just hold on to a basketball? Oh! <laughs> well, who needs a career if you have bigger fish to fry? And the male water monkey is usually up to his gills with babysitting. Where are the baby water monkeys, you may be wondering? Well, that's one way of taking care of the family. 
Whenever there's danger, just open your mouth and collect up the kids. That means you too, Junior. I just hope he doesn't burp. So much for the winner of the Best Dad of the Rainforest Award. He must really clean up on Father's Day. There's a non-fish face up in the flooded canopy you won't forget. It's the Wakari monkey, one of the least known monkeys in South America. And no, he's not embarrassed. That red face may actually be a sign of how healthy he is. The redder, the better. You might not think much of that tail compared to other rainforest monkeys, but you just haven't seen him do his thing. Go, Wakari! Well, you get the picture. The tropical rainforest is a pretty weird and wonderful place and about as far away from you as the planet Jupiter, right? Wrong. Because when you think about what we get from them, rainforests are really as close as your supermarket. I'll show you. Bananas, coffee, oranges, cashews, vanilla, these are just a few of the things that first came from the rainforests. And that's not including the gum in your chewing gum, the chocolate in your candy bar, and lots of the important medicines people use every day. If we get so much stuff from rainforests, where would we be without them? That's a really good question because many of the rainforests in the world are being cut down. I used to have an almost solid belt of rainforests all around my middle. Now it's broken into little pieces. That means the animals and plants who used to live there are disappearing too. But luckily, some people are trying to save the rainforest while there's still time. Kids too. And they're making news doing it. If we want to keep our Earth and be on this planet a little longer, we have to start saving it, you know, taking care of it. Why do we want to save the rainforest? So the animals could live. Kids aren't the only ones who care. These scientists in Brazil, for instance, are raising rare golden lion tamarind monkeys and then releasing them back into the rainforest. So this is good news for the cuddly tamarind. But they're just one species out of thousands. <laughs> Did you know scientists think there may be hundreds of animal and plant species in the rainforest that haven't been discovered yet? For some of them, finding and identifying each one is a full-time job. The tropical rainforest is an unforgettable, unbelievable place and bursting with more wild, weird and wonderful life than you can imagine. So hey, think it over. If there's one place worth taking care of, don't you think this is it?
Well, gang, it's been great trekking through the totally tropical rainforest with you. But there are lots more really wild animals all across this wonderful world of ours. So be sure to join me on our next adventure. Until then, this is your pal Spin. Spin you later. guys made it just in time. My favorite show's on. National Geographic is proud to present Really Wild Animals. Brand new home videos in a series especially for kids with a very special host. It's me, Spin. Also known as Dudley Moore. Now, kids can travel to the world's most exciting places and learn about some of the world's most amazing animals. But hang on, we move pretty fast. It's a jungle out there. Learn how animals survive in the wild when we visit Africa on a swinging safari. Find out if everything in Australia is really upside down when we explore the wonders down under. Take the plunge into a whole new world on a deep sea dive to the bottom of the ocean. And if you think you've seen some wild music videos, take a look at this. It's the quality you expect from National Geographic, but with a brand new spin. Thank you. Now kids can experience the animal adventures of a lifetime with Really Wild Animals, new from National Geographic.